Hello, Pish Ridge. If I have not had the pleasure of meeting you yet, my name is Rachel Hesse, and I am the Dean of Student Life at the Grammar School. Ms. Rhodes asked me if you could share three parenting tips with our families, what would they be? I wrote down a few ideas. I spoke to a couple teacher friends of mine to get their thoughts, and they pretty much aligned with mine. At our back to school night, I shared three nuggets of wisdom with our parents, and I'd like to share them with you here. I pray that they will encourage you to try something new in your home, or perhaps you already do a version of these and just maybe need to revisit and tighten them up a little bit. You know, in a teacher's mind, in the education world, the new year doesn't start in January. It actually starts in August because it's a new school year. So right now is a perfect opportunity for you to look at how things are working in your home. What isn't working? Find something that can be refined, that can be worked on and made better. I hope that this truly encourages you. Tip number one, what your children need from you the most right now is for you to be their parent and then you get to be their friend later on. They need to know who loves them and who is in charge of them, who is an authority over me. Believe it or not, they thrive when there are boundaries and limitations in place, along with relationship. You see, without relationship though, they will struggle to grow and mature in their behavior and in their thinking. When my children were much younger, they received their very first electronic device and I knew that I had to lay some ground rules down and rules that I was going to stick to. I decided that no device with a screen would be used during the school week, regardless if they had homework or not. On Friday afternoons after school, they would receive their devices and they would be allowed to use them throughout the weekend for a limited amount of time each day. It was tough at first. They naturally fought me on it. And of course, especially on the days when they did not have homework, like our beloved Wednesday after school, no homework days. They would beg and plead on these days. And there were many times that I wanted to just give in and say, okay, fine, you can have 30 minutes and that's it. But I knew I couldn't give in and I couldn't go back on what I had said was our rule. Soon they realized I was going to stick to my word Mean what you say and say what you mean. It will establish your credibility and your authority with your children now as they are young and later when they're teenagers, that credibility and authority will already be in place and it will be a little easier for you. Be a parent now and a friend later. Number two, teach your children to obey the first time all the time with a happy heart. This means without grumbling or complaining. This one's a tough one. We say this a lot here at school because it takes time and effort to put something new into place. This can be when you ask your child to clean their room, you give them a specific thing to do, whatever age appropriate thing you need done, and you ask them to do it once. Sitting at the table to eat, not getting up out of their chair or with the device. We sit, we eat, and then we may get up. Getting in the shower, it's time to start your homework. If your request doesn't get done, or you had to ask several times before it gets done, no worries, because now you get to say, man, I would love to let you go to your friend's house today, or oh, I would love for us to stop and get ice cream after school, but yesterday you disobeyed me. I asked you to do something and you did not do it the first time that I asked. So my answer is no. Next time, please obey the first time. Parents, Delayed obedience is also disobedience. So when they say, but I did do my homework, you can say, but I asked you three times to get it done. And I need you to do it the first time I ask you to do it, please. Maybe next time you'll get to go to a friend's house. Last year, our staff did a book study and we read through Shepherding a Child's Heart written by Ted Tripp. And one of the many lessons that we learned was that God gave us, the parents, to be his agent, to be his ambassador in the lives of our children. He says we're on an errand from God to shepherd our children and to, on his behalf, because our children are really not ours to do with what, as we please. Mr. Tripp teaches that our heart is the control center and a person's life is a reflection of their heart. In the book of Proverbs, chapter four, verse 23, it says that above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Miss Rhodes likes to say it's simple and sweet, for out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Obey the first time all the time with a happy heart. Number three, don't do for your child what your child can do for themselves. Teaching them accountability and responsibility is important to the growth of your child. We aren't raising our children to act like little boys and girls in their 20s. 
We're raising them to be the men and women that God created them to be, and that starts now. What kind of 20-something or 30-something do you want your child to look like? We only have 18 summers with our children, parents. 18, that's it. If your child is nine years old, they've already lived half of their life that they're going to live with you. In nine more summers, they will be out of your home, God willing, ready to go into the world. Are they ready for that? We prepare them to launch, and that happens today. I love teaching first grade. It's what I've been teaching for the past three years, and it's been such a joy. Students every year would always say, my mommy forgot to put my homework folder in my backpack, or my mommy forgot my reading book. She didn't put it in my backpack. And I would say, oh, sweetie, honey, that is not your mommy's book. That is your book. Why is your mommy packing your backpack? And I quickly remind them, I don't pack up your backpack for you when you leave school to go home, do I? And they just look at me like, oh, no, you don't. Show them how you want it done. Let them do it. It takes practice, and I know it takes time, but I promise you, in the end, them learning how to do those kinds of things for themselves is going to be so much easier for you and for them. When your child forgets their homework folder at school, this will happen many times, I promise. Give them a pass and tell them, you know, I'm going to take you back today. I need you to get what you need to get, but I need you to be responsible with your things. I will not save you next time, and I will not bring you back to school. By actually allowing them to fail the next time they do forget, you can say, man, I'm really sorry you forgot that again. What are you gonna do? How are you going to fix this? Can you call a friend? Can we take a picture of it? Can we write down the answers on another sheet of paper? When, you teach our when we teach our children to problem solve, to figure out things for themselves and us not quickly fix them for them, we're actually growing them and showing them a lifelong lesson. Natural consequences are the best way to teach a lesson. Don't do for your child what they can do for themselves. I pray that these three parenting tips were a blessing to you. And I pray that as parents, we go before our Father in heaven and we ask for the wisdom and the guidance that we need to raise the children that he gave us. Thank you.